Do you remember there used to be a documentary reality that was called The Secret? You know what? I don't remember because no one told me about it. It was a, it was a secret. You know yeah. what I mean? I but it wasn't like a number one seller and a best seller and all that, you know. But nobody knows about it. No, well, everybody does but you. But that's what I'm saying, though. It was a book and a documentary and all that about the laws of attraction. And that's what it is. Yeah. You have to manifest anything you want. I, I don't love care that. if you have nothing. I don't care if you were born living under a rock, kind of like you, never hearing about the secret. You can still manifest it and make it happen. Dude, you might be the most positive evil clown I've ever met. <laughs> You're riding down the Harland Highway. You gonna have your cans on? I'm putting my cans on because I, you know, I, I want to hear the theme music. Like, you know, hell yeah, yeah. It's all about the music, right, bro? Being a cans makes you feel like you're, you're you're doing it. You can you can judge your volume on the mic and all that. Yeah, yeah. And you know, if anyone knows how to work a mic, it's you, power That's player. Right. A mic is my weapon. A mic, yeah. A mic is like your instrument. It's it your is. tool. It is. That's it's right. like if you were a, if you were a knight, the mic would be like your sword. You know, me and my brother have a philosophy that you can do anything. You can you can do anything with the power of words. Yeah, that's true. You know what I mean? So a microphone can be a, a, a fucking a pretty heavy tool. You know what I mean? Fuck yeah, the power of words. Didn't Shakespeare say that once when he was at Pizza Hut with his girlfriend? Shakespeare wouldn't even be a Shakespeare if it wasn't for the words. It wasn't for, oh, for, for ye words. That's right. The power of the, of the lingo. The power of the words. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Holland Highway podcast. Mm-hmm. Now, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. You're here, and we're going to play some music. Uh, how do you like that theme song, bro? It's pretty generic, right? No, it's rocking. <laughs> it's rock- okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. We have a very, very special show today. An old mate of mine from out in the outback, uh, you're not going to believe who's here. I barely believe who's here. Violent J from the insane clown posse whoop, whoop. in the house, That's man. That's right. Dude, how are you, man? I'm, I'm doing really good, man. Oh, I mean, I damn. didn't know that being old, getting this age would be so... Awesome. If I'd have known that being this age would be as cool as it is, I wouldn't have worried about getting older, brother. Oh, dude, getting old is the best. Are you in the adult diaper phase yet? No, I haven't hit that. Oh, wait till you wait till you get into that. It's like walking around in a bowl of pudding. That's what's oh, it's <laughs> just... that. I still got that to look forward to. Dude, you're going to love it. I it's... mean, I've had a couple incidences, but I don't need it full time just yet. You know what I mean? I got that still oh, okay. on the horizon. Be honest. Have you ever... <laughs> Have you ever had a blowout on stage? Like you're you're doing a show and you, brother. Everybody in rock and roll knows that's a extremely common thing. Wait, like crapping your pants oh, on yeah. stage? Anything like that? Yeah, you got to realize you have to perform. Yeah, right. Every you, night, you can't no leave. What you're doing, no matter how you feel, the show must go on. You know. So when you're on tour, especially yeah. when you're on tour and you're eating all that shit. You know, and... Um, yeah, like you're jamming the late night Popeyes and the Taco Bell and the... Oh, yeah. And going out drinking and being hungover and your stomach bubbling oh. and all that. <laughs> See, Shakespeare wouldn't even know that word. Bubbling. We invented a new word. And, uh, you know, you have to go on, though. Yeah, you got to. You can get a flu, plus the temperatures, you know. we, we You're on stage, it's, it's, it's 95 degrees, right? Yeah. Sometimes you come off stage, it's... Fucking 20 degrees, you know? Yeah. Then you're in the bus, and the bus might have the air on, and it's back to hot, and it's back to cold, and all that temperature, be getting sick on the road is always... Then there's 10 guys in a bus, so if uh. one guy gets sick, everybody's sick. So now everybody's sick, bubbling in the, in the gut. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And you have to Wait, do the don't show. Don't make it sound delicious. Like now, <laughs> now bubbling sounds like thirst quenching, and I don't like that. Well, sometimes it's time for the percolator, but it's also time for the show. You know what I mean? Yeah. So when it's happening like that, you Well, fuck. wait, have you ever been on stage like in the middle of ripping out a song and just like... Like a full unload? Like a full shark. Where I'm actually worried about it coming down my leg and yeah, I like, always wear shorts on stage. Like you had to abandon stage. Like yeah, you're like No, no. Okay. But Thank there's God. been plenty of um wet farts. 
Yeah. Yeah. You ever you ever wet fart the crowd like you just grab the mic? You I got a wet one. You just put that mic on your crack and let them have it, bro. I'm you Duran Duran them. You, 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 you starting this off was things I never thought I'd be talking about publicly, but since you want the info, I'm gonna yeah. give it to you. I mean, they gotta know. I gotta know. The whole world got okay. to know. Well, you know that the, the crowd is literally grabbing your ankles. They're right there. Okay. Right? So Ankle they're, they're, they're right face level with your anus anyway. You know what I'm saying? On many venues, they're, they're, where their face is is yeah. right there. So it's like an anus crowd. Right. Now, they might not hear what's going on yeah. because it is very loud. Yeah. But it's definitely something going on, you know, right at that level. Is all I'm gonna say. Well, let me ask you this: You're a musician. You're in a top band. Well, that's that's uh, debatable. <laughs> that's that's debatable. But we're here talking about it, and you know, you know sounds, you know music. Let's say you're doing a song. You got one percolating. What was the word? Bubble, per- bubbleating, bu- bubbleating. Yeah, yeah. And somehow, because you're a musician, you just know that that thing's going to come out like a B flat or a C sharp or an F sharp. And you go, you know what? This would this note would fit perfect with this song. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. <laughs> like it's just the perfect Kenny G ass blaster. Well, you know, if you know it's coming. Yeah, you If you know it's coming, it. there's all sort of things you can do with it. Yeah, you can okay. incorporate it. You can almost feel what, what uh, note it's going to be by how hard it's coming out the tuba. You, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so you can already predict, you know. Yeah. But... The real fear, my yeah. friend, is yeah. what you don't know is coming. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, 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 because yeah. you're jumping around wow. at full maximum um, physical. Every Like me and Shaggy always say, we are right at the physical peak of our ability. Because when we're performing, you just know we're always about to throw up. Because we're right yeah. at, that, at the end of our wind. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So when you're moving around like that, you jump around like that, it's the unexpected you have to worry about you know what i'm saying well you know what's awesome about talking about getting older as you get older the toots and the flutes are only going to get more frequent and so now maybe as you guys tour more you can start to think about incorporating them into the tunes and tying them because it's going to be a lot more there's going to be like a a harmony a symphony coming out of your shorts it is damn near a symphony up there yeah when um when, you know, it, it can with the with the amount of physical energy we're exerting, yeah, and the amount of uh, chili cheese fries and Waffle House we're eating, oh, and the amount man. of um, cheap liquor we're guzzling, it can be quite the the, oh. the symphonic orchestra up yeah. there. Don't you love the Waffle House? You ever do this? You order two waffles, and instead of eating them, you just slap them on the side of your head and pretend you're Princess Leia. Yeah, I was going to tell you about the uh, symphony again. It can definitely be a, quite the, two, the horn section up there. Just moving right past the Yeah, I was just going to skip all that about the... Because you lost me on that. I know, I, I know, I know. It's a very yeasty question. Um, folks, Violent J's here. Uh, the Insane Clown Posse, one of the most radical, wild musical groups of the last three, four decades even. And uh, I got to start with a little list of you know, kind of the uh, obligatory questions. Let's get them out of the way, and then we'll jump right in, buddy. You, you ready? if I enjoy some of this frothy beverage? Dude, look at this. We got Fago. How do you say it? Fago? Fago? How do you say it? Well, Fago. Fago. Yeah. Yeah, Fago. Yeah. <laughs> Orange. And what flavor is yours? Um, delicious, fruity, and um, quite... Um, Bubbleated is the uh, raspberry blueberry flavor, which is, uh, yeah, they, that's the thing about Fago. They've yeah. got like 42 flavors, you know what I mean? I didn't know that, man. Cotton candy. Wow. Uh, sour apple. They, they do soda in ways soda's never been done, and that's why I love Fago, you know what I'm saying? Do they have old lady bath water? Because that's my favorite. Not yet. Oh, God, have you? Oh, I can just taste the skin flakes. I don't know why why they haven't incorporated that into such uh, tasty things like pie, pineapple, watermelon, and yeah, if they're raspberry, gonna make, blueberry. If they're going to make raspberry, blueberry, why not make senior psoriasis? Probably's you know? on his way. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? Because if we so. could think about it, if we could think it up, how could they not? You know what I mean? Dude, think about it. It's a hot, blistery day, summer, your poolside. What's going to cool you down faster than a summertime psoriasis? That's what I'm saying, a little old lady sweat. Right, right dude? You Some know? sponge bath water, just chug it, like, just pretend this is sponge bath just, water. Just stick my face in and go, you know? Oh, that's some good old skin flake right there. <laughs> All right, so the obligatory question. We got to get them out of the way. There's only about four, and uh, then we, and then we dive in, bro. Come on. We dive in like a couple of polywogs jumping into a sperm bank. Yeah, man. I, I, that's a perfect way to describe it. It makes me want to jump in cannonball style. <laughs> Imagine jumping cannonball style into a sperm bank. No, no, There'd no. be unborn children everywhere. No, I don't think about that. But well, what you was will. the question you, you were getting will. at? Here we go. First, these are the obligatory ones I have to ask. No doubt. And then we move. First question Have you ever tasted human flesh? Oh, yeah. I did fucking not even four hours ago. Um, these have to be asked. Yeah. Uh, what time is it? Probably like three, maybe three hours ago, not even. Second question. Where are the bodies buried? There's a um, overpass in, in southwest Detroit over the Rouge River. And um, there's a, a giant, there's giant cement posts that hold up the freeway. Yeah. And if you go under the freeway where the overpass is, there's a hole in one of the giant posts. There's a big, like almost like a wrecking ball hit a hole in it. Okay. And um, they're in there. Perfect. Because you have to tear down the whole fucking yeah, freeway yeah. to even get in there. You know what I mean? And they're not tearing that down anytime soon. It's almost like a tomb sponsored by the city. Yeah. Is it? Well, yeah. But you need two people. Uh. The hole is up top of the post. So you need two people to sort of gorilla press oh. the body before you can even put it in the hole. Because one person, oh, yeah. ain't gonna be able to, unless you're Brock Lesnar, you're not going to be able to press it up and get yeah. it in the hole. You need two people. I'm not trying to uh, point out any accomplices, accomplices but uh, Shaggy, Shaggy, me and being down a long time. You yeah. know what I mean? That's all I'm going to say about that. But that's where they're at, though. Okay, good. I, look, we had to ask. Uh, since you already spoke to this, what tastes better, a human femur? Or a scapula. What do you go to at a barbecue? What What's your go to bone? The um the, the femur or the scapula? Or it could be a tibia. I mean, it could be a, you know. Well, the pussy ain't on there, on the list. Hang on. Well, it says there's no bones in a pussy, so technically it's not. But as a default. If you haven't eaten a bone in less than three months, yes, pussy does qualify. So, pussy? I was going to say, because there's a bone in my girl's pussy all the time. It's mine, but it's definitely got a bone in it. That is the correct answer. (laughs) Right. And then last question, and then we're going to jump in, Violent. We're going to jump into this interview so deep, it'll be like two buck-tooth gophers digging into Dolly Parton's underwear on a Thursday night. All right, all right. The last question, and be honest this time. Okay. How old were you when you murdered your parents? He's hissing. No, because um, it's I don't didn't really plan on giving my age away because it's about to happen. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it hasn't happened yet. And if I give my age, I, I have it. to give my age. You get what I'm saying? Got it. I, you just you know, put me on blast like that, Harlan? No, and I come no. on your show and the first cool. fourth no. thing you ask me is my age? We're cool. All, all, all I'm going to take away from this is it's it's clear to me that they had it coming and they're going to get it. Right. It's coming. That's right. Yeah. They have it coming. They have it coming. Mm. And they, it sounds like they earned it. I mean, you didn't even say anything about it. And I think they earned it. They got it coming. And if I don't, Act up fast, it's probably going to happen anyway, and I, I need to make that statement. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't have that much time, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm getting up there. And so little, can... little buddy's got to show the mommy and daddy that he loves them. <laughs> Before mommy and daddy ain't around to, sh- to show them the way I want to. Are they going in the hole under the uh, underpass, or do they get their own little, because they're parents, they get their own little spot? Well, you know, like I said, if it doesn't happen soon, um, I'll fuck it up and not get the chance to happen. And uh, Shaggy's on tour pretty much for the rest of the year, and I don't have anybody. 
Uh, to help me gorilla press them up through the hole. So hello, I didn't really um, think about that either. Hello? Really? I could, dude, I could help you lift. My man. Well, I do trust you, though, and I know you've done things like that before, so I don't think you would just go running off at the mouth about it. So right. maybe we could hook something like so that. So let up. me just say it out loud. Do you need help murdering your parents? And B, do you want me to help you murder your parents? No. I didn't say anything like that. I was just talking about hiding him. Uh, you want? So I got the shit handled myself. It's it's something I want to take care of. But but if you want to help me afterward, do the lift the heavy weight? Sure. But you want to just come all at the last second into the fun part I've been planning? Nah, homie. Dude, that's me. Do the words selfish ring a bell? Maybe I want to get in on murdering your parents. Well, it's something I've been talking about doing for 45 years, and you're just going to come along in 15 minutes and just get to enjoy the freshness with me? No, brother. Brother. Just selfish. Just selfish, but I still love you. Good. Love me enough to help me get rid of the heavy weight. Good. I'll help you lift. I got one of those belts, you know, the belts with the Velcro strap that go around your waist? Good. Like, they, they can support your pelvis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, bring two of those because I'm not allowed to lift over 25 pounds, so you're going to have to do the bulk of it. Okay. Okay, we got, through the, the, we got through the obligatory questions. Now we jump into the meat of the interview like two elves in the forest jumping into a Smurf stretched whatever. Tell us, Violent J. Easy. Easy, well, man. I'm getting excited, bro. I just, <laughs> I'm happy you're here. <laughs> I'm really happy you're here, man. This, uh, by the way, I'm going to get into our history, but Violent J and I did a movie together. That's where we first met. But before I jump into that, tell us about the history quickly of the Insane Clown Posse. Where, where did it come from? Where did it, this thing sprout from, man? It's man, so cool. We were, we were two. Three, we were, started off four of us in Detroit. We were huge wrestling fans, pro wrestling fans. Oh, you know? right on. And um, when we turned about 17, hip-hop started to overtake that love. You oh, know, we knew yeah. we were going to be wrestlers one day. Yeah. Oh, right? yeah. We knew it. But at 17, hip-hop started to overtake that passion, and we wrestled it for a long time. We didn't want to say, all right, fuck wrestling, we're going to do rap now. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Because we, we had already put so much energy and time into wrestling. Yeah. But anyway, we ended up saying, fuck it, we're going to do hip-hop. And so we did hip-hop, and once we started it, we knew failure wasn't an option. We knew we'd do this forever. And did you just love it? Like, did it, like, speak to you? Or you like, was, this um, is awesome. It was my calling. And it wow. took a long time to accept that it wasn't wrestling because since from like the sixth grade until I was like 17 or 18, I had known I was going to be a wrestler. So did Shaggy. Yeah. But we accepted it. Hip hop's what it is. And what's funny is that in when we had our first gold record. It's your first. Not many people, by the way, not many people can say, oh, our first. Like how many do you have, by the way? Oh, man, we got like five. That's a- that's major. Okay, know, that, that's so impressive. Keep it going. It is, I'm, I'm proud. Way to go. But um, we, uh, re- because we had put so much positive energy toward knowing we're going to be wrestlers. Yeah. That when we were, when I was 26, right, the WWE contacted us and asked us to make some ring music for a team they had, right? And we said, wait a minute, do you motherfuckers know we wrestle? And oh, they were huh. like, no. And next <laughs> yeah. thing you know... We flew to Connecticut and wrestled in front of Vince McMahon. And then we debuted at SummerSlam yeah. wrestling. So the point is, believe in the powers of positive thinking and the laws of attraction. I love because that. Because even though we, we changed our dream, yeah. we had already applied the proper energy toward that dream. Yeah. So it came to us anyway. Like, if you still want it. Here it is. Yeah. And we took it, and we did it for a few months until it became a job, and then we quit. But we, it came to us. Yeah. Because we had already manifested it. What's really cool about that story is, A, you hit two dreams. Mm-hmm. Most people in their life are lucky if they hit one Absolutely. or even get halfway to one. So right. you wrestling checklist, your music checklist. Mm-hmm. And I think it's really cool when you're going for a dream and you're so intensely into it and as you said focused mm-hmm. and all of a sudden something comes up on the radar you weren't even expecting and goes blip and you go 
holy fuck, I, I like this even more. Mm-hmm. Like, isn't that a wild feeling well, when, when you, it just kind of slams you in the face? You remember there used to be a documentary out, it was called The Secret. And it, it was a book, it was a documentary, it was everything. You know what, I don't remember it because no one told me about it. It was a, a secret. It was a secret, you yeah. know what I mean? I but it wasn't like a number one seller and a best seller and all that, you know. But nobody knows about it. No, well, everybody does but you. But that's what I'm saying, though. It's, Wait a minute, isn't secret like a, a women's underarm deodorant? It is also, but if they call it secret, it's sarcasm because it's not a secret no more to everybody okay. but you, though, brother. Well, but I anyway, guess fuck me over then. Thanks. Yeah, you just the last to know. But thanks, but all you dirty whisperers. Twenty four years after the fact, I'll put you <laughs> up on the secret. It was a book and a documentary and all that about the laws of attraction, and that's what it is. Yeah. You have to manifest anything you want. You could be a motherfucking. Alaskan snow crab farmer oh, slash talk to me slash talk. Ukrainian astronaut asteroid projector. You just name my two fucking things, bro. Right, and talk if you put me. the right energy toward that, yeah, it will happen. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't love care that. if you have nothing. I don't care if you were born living under a rock, kind of like you, never hearing about the secret. You can still manifest it and make it happen dude you might be the most positive evil clown i've ever met (laughs) now let me let me ask you this violent yes (laughs) you've hit two of them you've manifested i love it that you have that positive energy that that you made that happen for you at this stage in your life as as we just talked about me and you're getting closer to the pudding diapers right is there a third thing that you would dare manifest and make happen, or is your cup full? Because you you have a lot going on. Is there a, a third thing that you would dare kind of chase or try to bring to fruition? Honestly, no. And I'll tell you okay. why. Because you're right. I did get to achieve two major dreams. Huge. You know, wanted to be a, a, do hip-hop for a living. Yeah. And I wanted to pro-wrestle, you know. Yeah. And I did, I did both of those. So, there are... Two dreams I still have that I yet to accomplish. And they're not dreams because I don't have dreams. I, I, I have missions. Dude, you know I'm, I'm liking this energy. Yes. And God, um, I, can't I didn't wait accomplish. To your parents. The only two uh, missions I didn't accomplish yeah. are very fairly easy to accomplish. So I haven't been on, on a quest to do them. I've just been enjoying life. But there's two things. Can you tell I, us what they are? Absolutely. Okay. One of them is to visit Japan. Okay, that's very easy. I just did it this year. That's what I'm saying. My brother did it too. I'm actually going in on New Year's. So that's an easy. You're going to love it. Yeah, You're going to that, love that's it. That's an easy. Um, well, it's easy unless the plane crashes. But my goal was to visit rural Japan, not not um. You want to rule Japan. You want to rule Japan? Yes, I want to be a dictator and rule. No, An I emperor. want to visit the country where the ninjas train. Oh, rural, I, rural yes, Japan. Rural. I want right. to. I want to visit the mountains where the ninjas <sighs> actually train. Not like you know, because that's how, when I developed the goal. Yeah. I was a huge martial arts fan. And, yeah, and the ninjas come from Japan, and so as a kid, yeah. I said I will go there one day. Right. The other thing I said is, as a kid, is I want to go to Alaska. And fuck oh. in an igloo. Because if you're in a frozen igloo, what better place to enjoy some warm pussy than a frozen igloo? And wearing like a caribou husk. Right. Or hide. With yeah. a, a, a thing full of raw fish hanging off a hook in the corner. And obviously you're with this fine-ass Eskimo chick and you're oh. both underneath a big furry walrus coat blanket. The only thing tough about that is, you know, a lot of women want you to say their name when they're making love. And they got to, yeah. And when you're tricky. with an Eskimo, and no offense, but, you know, imagine me, how's that feel? Hung the tongue, 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 hung the tongue. Like, it, they're, they're tongue twisters, but you get through it. Because I've done it. Mm-hmm. I've made love in, a, in, a, in an igloo. Oh, and damn. Here's where it here's where your ego gets boosted, violent. And I don't want to be too graphic, but it's cold in there. Right. So when you're doing the deed, when you're making sweet Eskimo love, when you're making sweet love, and you're going in and out, buddy, steam's coming up off of it. Oh, and no. you feel like a locomotive driving through th- Freddy Krueger's underpants. Like you're just, you know, you got that. And it's so cold in the igloo, it's steaming. 
It's like a bowl of clam chowder just offering itself up to the gods. Which is bro. probably melting the roof of the wig, big glue, making dripping, it rain. Dripping. It gets wetter than you've ever had wet sex in your life. It's right. Like, and, yeah. And, and so, your, your body on top of her is just glistening from the, 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 the sort of, not the coldest uh, drops because they are freshly melted by the heat of your body. Well, let's call it what it is, pussy steam. That, right. <laughs> Keep it real. And, um... That's falling upon you in spr- sprinkles, yeah. causing erotic style glistening. Bingo. going, and here's what happens, Violent. You get so excited. You get so uber excited. You get as hard as a narwhal. And they're native to that area. Do you know what a narwhal is? No. They're the whales with the giant spike on the end of their nose. You're like a narwhal going in and out of the magic underwater cave where the littlest mermaid learned to masturbate. Damn. That's exactly why I want to do it. I thought so. You know what I mean? Do you know her? Does she have a sister? Or it something? was a one nighter. Oh, I know her sister. Her what? sister. <laughs> you, got, you, you got to do that. They're from yeah. the east side of yeah. the. That area, from where they, the lower east side, you know yeah. they're, they're, they're like from the Harlem of, yeah. of igloo country. It's easier to it's, it can be pronounced, but unless you're from that region, you got to sort of hit the lower, the fourth vertebrae Dude. on the bottom of your, just above your shoulders. Oh to, yeah, to really get the uh, out of, out of oh, that. You got to. It's just it's just how you enunciate. But, but when I was a kid, I thought yeah. if you go to Alaska and yeah. you get some pussy, you're definitely in an igloo. Oh yeah, you know, but now now that I've grown, I I see that there are uh, cities in Alaska that that have gas stations and restaurants and right. hotels. But my vision is to actually be in the fucking igloo. You know, that's what, what you want because that's the pure vision. And I got to be honest, even though uh, the Eskimo societies are now more advanced, I love the purity Me of too. them living in an igloo. That's their culture. That's what they came out of. That's what they were raised up in. And all of a sudden, you see an Eskimo not in a fur smock or a, a hide of a caribou or a seal. Now they're in an Adidas T-shirt. Right. And they're wearing Nikes and they're driving a snowmobile. She's it's, it's pulling not up the same. to the fucking igloo in an Uber. Yeah, it's like, come on, yeah. man, what happened to my vision? You know what I'm saying? She's got the fucking yeah. La- she got a, a tablet with her and shit. You know, I want to see yeah. the way I pictured it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like dog sled. Just dog sled right in there. I'll tell you what, one of the funnest things I ever did, and you might want to try this after you pop your igloo cherry, I had an, an orgy in an igloo. And what happens is you stuff them in, like it's, it's only so big, and it's got that little doorway, that little door. And when you get in there and you got 60 or 65 bodies pumping and getting oily and sweaty, it looks like the igloo's taking a shit. When you get that lubricated, it starts popping people out that little tubular front door. It's like, and whoop, that's a hot thing. That's whoop, that adds to the eroticism, dude. It's just wild. Well, you know, since we're gonna just let's just point out the polka dotted elephant in the room, why don't we? Okay, I come on your podcast, brother, yeah. and I reveal a, a lifetime goal of mine that I've yet to accomplish, yeah, right, which is to have sex in an igloo, right? And don't think I didn't catch. How I'm over here confession, confessing my truth about how I've never accomplished this dream of mine, which is to have singular sex with any woman, in, Eskimo woman in an igloo. And you have to point out that you had a, not only had sex in a fucking Alaskan igloo, but you had an orgy. Orgy, yeah. All right? And we put two We're igloos full of so together. Many yeah. Es- Alaskan Eskimoian hotties that they're popping out the front of it like they're just shooting out like a like a pinball machine. Right. Well, good way to make me sound under um, impressive because my lifetime goal is something you did on a on a fucking off night uh, tour stop with with Harlan William groupies lined up fucking four Alaskan blocks long. I'll tell you, bro, I was just up there hunting walrus. 
Right. And it just almost fell in my lap. I pulled up to the edge of the ice flow with the dog sled and the team, the Huskies, two different color eyes. And we also had Marilyn Manson on the dog sled team because he's got two different colored eyes. So he, he was leading the fucking dog sled team. Well, and uh, we were just hunting walrus, those big fat fucks. I, t- I call them manatees with teeth. Did you bump into the abdominal snowman out there? The abdominal snowman? Yeah, because you're about to meet the abdominal whole man when I get out there because I'm laying everything I see. Wow. I'm laying every female from Anchorage to Eubanks. The only thing you got to be aware of, buddy, when you're out there jumping from girl to girl in Alaska, just make sure you don't get the snow crabs. They're big. <laughs> oh, man. They're big and they bite. And they're delicious when cooked properly. Yeah, if you if you take a hot enough bath, you can eat your own crabs. Ah, uh, holy God, I love it. All right, where are we going now? Um, oh, I wanted to because think uh, we were talking about getting old, and I thought of something that you and Shaggy could do when you get really old. When you retire, you could open an IHOP, puh, puh, an international. What is it? I wrote it down. International Insane House of Posse Pancakes. I hop pa pa. Wow. You, when you guys want to hang it up and just chill out, still have a little money come in, you two open an I hop pa 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 and you serve up flapjacks. Have you heard of um, Huddle House? Yeah. Harlan Huddle House. Are we going to have a pancake war here, bro? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I mean, are we throwing down flapjacks, guy? I'm saying bring it to, nothing to it but to do it. <laughs> I got a spatula in the car. You ever take two pancakes and put them on your ears and pretend you're Princess Leia? Um, it's not since we talked about it last time, but it's sounding more appealing every time. <laughs> <laughs> it's starting to sound pretty damn interesting. All right, so let's jump to how we met. Okay, yeah. this, this so so we go back along. What is it? Maybe twenty years, uh, give or take uh, five more. So give or take, yeah, a couple of decades. Yeah, something like that. So here's what happened. I'm kicking around in Hollywood doing my movies, and my manager and agent call me up and say, "Hey, the insane clown posse is doing a movie. They want you to be in it." Yeah, yeah. And so I wasn't part, right, you know, hip to the hip hop world. I, that wasn't my wheelhouse. I was like kind of pop music, heavy metal, Iron Maiden type of guy. So I go, oh, let me, let me look up and see who they are. So I went on and I looked. And as soon as I saw you guys, I was like so tripped out. I was like, that, that looks so, you guys look so fucking cool. Like I was super excited and said, okay, well, now I got to listen to the music. I feel bad I didn't know the music but i'm just being honest and i put on the first song i put on of yours guys was it was the what i wrote it down um what was it oh mr johnson's hat oh hell yeah it was the very can i read a few lyrics Fuck yeah. so this is the first thing i heard this is from your song uh mr johnson's head it goes i couldn't stand the pressure not another day i didn't like the fucker mr johnson anyway I sat up in his class. He hung a rebel flag. I cut the bigot's head off, and I stuffed it in my bag. Mm-hmm. I couldn't stand the pressure. Not another day. I didn't like the fucker, Mr. Johnson, anyway. I sat up in his class. He hung a rebel flag. I cut the bigot's head off, and I, I stuffed, stuffed it, it in, in my bag. bag. Yes. And I just went, you know, I'll be honest. I'm going to be totally honest. At first, I was kind of appalled, but I was excited, and I was, like, sort of interested, but I was like, This is sort of vile, but then I also went, fuck, this is what I love about America. You can you can say and do stuff like that. Some people are gonna love it, some people might be offended by it, some people might be eh, eh, but I just love that I knew you guys were expressive, you were artists, and your stuff like I gotta say, that appeals to so many people because there's a lot of like kind of young youthful angst mixed into a lot of your songs yeah well it's no different music is no different than it's like the old video stores you know yeah walk into a fucking blockbuster right yeah just like walking into an old record store you got everything you want there's romance in music there's romance you know what i mean you can you can go right to the kind of artists that sing ballads or r&b yeah there's high actane energy you can go right to a fast band you know this speed metal or something or whatever you're into yeah the, and there's there's horror 
Yeah, you know, yeah, you could go yeah. to something like Insane Clown Posse or some Marilyn Manson or, or stuff like that or some of the, some of the old Ozzy and, and you know Ozzy, Black yeah. Sabbath and stuff oh. uh, used to touch on elements like that. Yeah, even one of the thir- first horror uh, videos people did under credit was Michael Jackson's Thriller. Yeah, yeah, him turning into people a zombie love it. and shit. Yeah. yeah, you know, but everything should be in a music store. That's I mean, everything is in a music store yeah. that's in a movie store. You know, yeah, it's yeah. something for everybody. You know it's I mean? artistic freedom of speech, and, and everyone should be able to express themselves, and no matter what the range, I think. That's I th- right. And that was part of what yours did, because it was shocking to me. I'd never seen or heard a presentation like yours and the lyrics, and I was like, oh. but I also went, you know what, this is crazy, but this is the beauty of America. And it what's kind of scary nowadays, it feels like that's starting to, getting tampered down a little bit with all that's going on, which well, I don't anybody like. anybody trying to stop, okay, like, yeah. any, I know our music ain't for everybody. Yeah. I know our music is for a selective few, you know what I mean? But that's what's cool is we don't shove our shit down nobody's throat. Like, in other words, yeah. you won't hear us on the radio. We yeah. don't have any hits. Yeah. Not one hit, you know? It's because you're not going to have to sit through what we do while you're waiting to hear what you love. We don't open for nobody. We never went, went on tour and opened opening for anybody yeah you don't have to sit through our vulgarities and and our show while you're waiting to see your favorite band you yeah, know yeah we don't subject what we do to anybody that don't want to see it yeah but we don't want nobody coming into our world trying to stop us yeah yeah you know it's yeah. like if somebody does a certain kind of music you don't like you don't have to fucking listen yeah you know what i mean but don't go and try to st- stop them because you yeah. hate it so much you yeah. know I, like, I don't like country music myself. Yeah, yeah. But I don't want to go out and stop the motherfuckers yeah, from yeah, doing it. You yeah. know what I mean? I want them to be able yeah. to do it and the people that love it to love it. Yeah. It's not for me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, a guy should be able to sing about a relish stain on his shirt. If he the wants. The same way you should be able to sing about stuffing your teacher's head in a bag, right? That's right. Now, exactly let, right. Let me ask you this. Was there ever a conscious effort for you guys? Because, you know, you have to think in the course of a musical career, it would be interesting or it would be great even to have a radio hit. Oh, Did man, you and Shaggy awesome. ever sit down and go, you know what, we've done all this stuff. It's never. We know it's not going to get radio play, but why don't we sit down and write a song that maybe, you know, um, what's is it Megadeth that has that song... Uh, I got a what's that? They have that. They got that one song that was a hit. That real mellow no. song. They had the Sandman, and then they had that. No, um, you're talking about Metallica. Yeah, Metallica. Yeah, yeah. It's that kind of real melodic mm-hmm. song, and it's actually quite beautiful. I try to tip my tongue too. Yeah, I got a. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, but but what I'm saying is, here were these hardcore guys, and they had this thing that made it to the radio. So my question to you. Does it sort of pang you that you haven't done that, or was that ever something you guys wanted to do by design musically? We'd love to do it. We'd yeah. love to do it, but we've never sat down and wrote a song for that process, for that for that reason. I would love it if you guys tried. What we've done is looked at the finished product and said, which one of these might yeah. have a chance? You know, we got shot down every time. You know what I'm saying? There's been a time where we've been on a major label, and we spent a quarter million dollars on a video yeah. and, and hired another guy who's uh, friends with MTV to walk it in there and try to talk him in yeah. and playing it. And once, back in the day, once they said no, you were done. Yeah. There was no other opportunities. They had a monopoly on everything. Of course, now it's YouTube, but back then, yeah. they had, when they said no to a single, you, that single didn't hit. Wow. You know what I mean? You were done. There wasn't anywhere else to take it. So, you know, but thankfully, they never did play, play any of our singles like that because that, created our legacy dude you know the fact that you guys have five gold records and didn't have access to the industry doors it's it's amazing it's a tribute and you should be very proud it's it's it's, at the time amazing we were frustrated as hell yeah you know but but you know and people say you you, you know like when did you know you make it when did you know you made it there was never a point when we knew we made it because we were stayed hungry all the way. Uh, that's what you, you know need. what I'm saying? Yeah. There was never a point, even when we got our first platinum record, we weren't like, oh, this is everything we thought it'd be. No, yeah. it felt like this is here, but it's not the way it's, you know, we still yeah. stayed hungry, you know what I'm saying? So it never, there never was a moment where we were like, yes, 
pretty much until recently, you know, yeah. until we, we, we realized that we've, that we've, um, done everything we set out to do, you know? Yeah. Then we look back for the first time and we're like, damn, we came far, you know what I mean? Yeah. But at the time, all through the 90s and 2000s and, and even almost up to the 2020, we just kept ro- riding and never looking back, you know what I mean? You know what, though? Maybe in this new era of YouTube and streaming and all that, you know, a, a good song can't be stopped. Like, you know, just take, like, Poison, for example. Every rose has its thorn. Great song, yeah. Like, a great song, once people hear it, it's 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 got a life of its own. Right. So. I don't know if you guys, you don't need really need to hear it from me, but I hope you guys search for that song yeah. that's unstoppable and it's like the crowning thing in your career and you go, fuck you guys that wouldn't put us on the radio and it just rolls and blows up. So from me to you, I hope you keep searching for that, you Thank and Shaggy, you. Yeah. and you don't give up on that, manifest that and have that song. I don't know if it's if it's edgy or if it's a you trick everyone and it's a soft song like that, but I hope for your guys' sake you get that one hit that no one can deny and it, it, it gets that com- kind of commercial it'd be dope it would be cool man but it's also cool if it don't because you can only ask for so many blessings that's you know right I mean? that's right but i i from me to you i hope it happens because i think be awesome. i think it would be great and your fans would love it and, and uh, the whole world would be like those guys did this song that that just couldn't stop so I, I'm, I'm hoping for it man yeah. so let's go back to then you guys do a movie called Big Money Hustlers. Yes, yes. My agents say, do you want to be in it? And I looked at, at you guys. I listened. And I said, you know what? These guys are crazy. I love crazy. I'm in. Yeah, man. We were. I was yeah. watching something about Mary. Yeah. At the theater. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> I saw you on there. Yeah. And I was like, right when I'm watching it, I remember we were on tour. And right when I'm watching it yeah. at the theater, I was like, write this guy's name down. Don't forget, I told my dude, I'm like, write this guy's name down. He would be the <laughs> awesome. shit. We, we thought there's no way we're going to, yeah. you know what I mean? But yeah. I just like thinking we start off at the top, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and you were so cool, you were down to do it, and we yeah. couldn't believe it, you know what I mean? Yeah. We were like, hell yeah. And in our world, in the juggalo world, that movie is like iconic. It is, yeah. In, in our in our in our orbit, that is everything. That movie is. I uh, get people. I get fans all the time, like emailing me and comment, and and they quote lines from the movie, like honk for, honk if you love sugar. Yeah, I think that I was, wondered if, if if you if you heard stuff like that. oh a lot all the time, Dope. like honk if you love sugar, and a, and a lot of the scenes I played Officer Harry Cox in case you you yes, know yes. you don't remember me. And, uh, you know, I did a lot. You guys let me do a lot. You and John, the director, yeah, let yeah. me do a lot of improvising. Yep. And I did one scene where we were in a coffee shop and I was putting donuts on my eyes and yeah. saying I'm a, a donut owl or something. And so, I remember yeah. standing back watching yeah. you go. Yeah, I remember seeing you Nobody standing Nobody wanted there. to say cut yeah, yeah, because everything you were doing was so crazy and funny. We just were letting you go. So yeah. we would do your takes and we would just go and just yeah. keep going and you would yeah. just be doing bizarre shit. <laughs> yeah. And I know John... John Caffiero yeah. ha- had a hard time uh, editing that because what do you use? Yeah, there was You're a lot. You're doing so much funny shit, you know what I mean? They can only put so much in there, you know? Well, do you want to hear something really cool? I don't think I ever told you this. It's the only movie, Violent, where I could not stop laughing and do my line. And I'll tell you what scene it was. So you had, I was Officer Harry Cox. And the chief police was the guy from the Jerky, Jerky Boys. Boys. What was yeah. his name? Uh, Johnny Brennan. Johnny Brennan. The guy was so funny. Yeah. And you guys put him in a fat suit. Yeah. And he's one of those guys, every now and then you meet a guy and you just look at them and they they trigger you. You start laughing. So we had a scene where we're at the cop shop and he, he goes, Cox, come in here. Go get me a box of donuts. Right? That was the line. <laughs> So I walk up to him. He says, go get me a box of donuts. But then he added his own improv. He went, Cox, come here. Go get me a box of donuts. <laughs> like he did this stupid fucking noise. And he was in the fat suit. With, and I lost it. We, we had, I don't know if you were there that day. We had, to, we had to shoot that scene. I think eight or nine times I could I I lost it every time. And, what the fuck is that uh, sound? Right, what that's, that that's what it got me. It was just like, get me the fucking donuts. Uh-huh. <laughs> 
Dude, John finally said, I said, John, I can't. I can't. This is the first movie I've ever, I know it's not professional. He, he would go, he would go, ah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like he'd drag it out. <laughs> so if you watch that movie, this is for the fans. Go back and watch Big Money Hustlers. And John, the director, said, you know what? I think uh, Harry Cox would laugh at that. Let's just leave it in. So he just conceded. And so if you watch the movie, you'll see me laughing. The real laugh, yeah. And it's not acting. I could not. And it's the only movie I've ever done where I couldn't hold it. And I loved it because it's so... How hard is it to not laugh? Like, I just loved it. It was I so precious. I remember you precious. had, you had did... Um, what I remember from, from that shoot was yeah. you had did Half-Baked... Yeah. Uh, prior to that, and we kept bugging you to try to get you to smoke with us. I know, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's the biggest thing. Like, I'm not a big weed guy, and my whole career, because I did Everybody wants to every, smoke. Dude, I'll go do comedy shows and stuff. People will shake my hand. Hey, man, I it love the show. There. I pull my hand away, and there's a bud the bigger a fucking Ronald McDonald's nut bag in my I'll hand, bet. you know? I'll like, it's, it's like I get all these, uh, and people, they look so crestfallen. They're, hey, man, you want to smoke? I'm like, I don't do it. And they're like, they're all oh, by. oh, half baked guy doesn't smoke weed. Oh, <laughs> it's like that scene from Christmas Story. Oh, I don't like it. I don't want to eat my mashed potatoes. Oh, dude, man, it, you it should fun. come. We do like a um, uh, was it a Rocky Horror Picture Show style thing with with big you money do? hustles? Yeah, I didn't know. We about do. This. We have it. We show it sometimes at our festival at the gathering. Yeah. But we also just go to selective cities and show it. Oh, the movie. Yeah, at a oh, theater. Wow. And everybody comes out and acts out all the shit and everything. No. It's really cool, man. Oh, I'd, if I'm if I'm around, I'd go to that. I'd Brother. love this. And are people in makeup and oh, everything? Oh, everybody goes all out. It's, oh. it's really, really fun. And and um, it, it's just super fucking, super fucking unique. It's not like the Rocky Horror Picture Show because everything's different. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. But it's the same, I think, the same idea. Wow. It's very cool, brother. All right. Well, thank you for having me in the movie. It thank was a blast. Thank you for doing it. What? And you know what was cool? It, this is so weird because back then nobody did it except Woody Allen because it was too expensive and the city didn't like it. We got to shoot in the middle of New York City. I know. Crazy, Like, right? here I am in New York City. I just got married. I think I'd been married two months. And I said to my wife, I said, baby, I got to go to New York for two weeks to shoot a movie with the insane clown boss. And she was just like, what the fuck did I get myself into? You know? <laughs> and it was Dolomite's last last movie. It was? Yes. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Eddie Murphy ended up playing Dolomite in, in a movie. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. But yeah, that was, um, that was his final movie. Wow, that's right. Yeah, it was it was fun, man. It, it was, was a lot of fun. Very cool. Um, I wanted to go back real quickly because th this is more of a serious topic, but and I find it interesting, and I actually like it. But confirm it with me: is there an element because a lot of your songs sort of touch on evil and dark tones and things? Mm -hmm. But I feel like I've read and I picked up on that. Is there an element of God? In your in what you do, I think so, but but it's 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 definitely due to my own ignorance as as a writer, and what yeah. I mean by that is um, I I consider myself a religious person, and so does Shaggy, right? Okay, but yeah. we, but we're not part of we don't believe in any specific religion. Yeah, you know, people you believe in the people four think we're, or something. We're Christians, yeah. or, or Catholic or whatever. But um, that be, that's because we said. In, in a very important song, it's hard to explain, but it was a very important song on our on our sixth album that yeah. people have been waiting for. You know, yeah. we said uh, the carnival is God. You know, but my ignorance didn't realize that by saying that I was sort of speaking as one sort of religion. Yeah, but I meant a creator. Like the carnival is yeah. having faith. Yeah, oh, you know, wow. faith is a good thing because it gives it people is. hope. It is, you know, wow. and a lot of people that's that's all they have, you know, is yeah. their faith, you know, yeah. and so it's and, and I believe that there is a higher power, but I definitely don't believe in any organized religion. Yeah, and and so people, I think, think we do because of the wording, but I just didn't know any better. 
Yeah, right. I got you. Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? I would have worded it differently. I would have said, you know, I wouldn't have, I didn't want people to think that we meant any specific religion. You know what I mean? Because yeah. we don't, you know? No, but, you know, f- to me, faith is the religion because the word faith encompasses all of it. And I'm with you. I find that organized religions can have benefits, but they've also brought a lot of corruption and destruction yeah. in the world. But, but faith is. It's, it's its own entity, and yeah. it's a powerful force, and it's it strong. Is. And it really makes me happy to hear that that's part of who you are and Shaggy, and and, and it it's sort of a sublime message inside of your music that, really that's really everything. beautiful. It's yeah. everything. You it's know, good it, to hear. But it's not meant to, for the, the casual listeners. Yeah. That me- that message is meant for the, the uh, people that really get into our stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's definitely there, and once you really... De- decipher what we're about is yeah. everywhere. It's wow. all over the place, but yeah. it's so it's so hidden that um, if you don't know what we mean, or, yeah. or like a lot of the anger in uh, the messages in our music is real anger. Yeah, right? it's like when we say uh, "young or rebel flag," you know, yeah. we're very much against racism and things like that. Yeah. But it sounds at first listen like we're just killing people and yeah. we're killing everybody. But usually, when you really dissect it, the people we're killing are like bigots or yeah. you know what, wife beaters or, yeah. or child abusers. You know, yeah, like there's slangs and words that we use to describe these people. Yeah, that, that kind of fly by the first time, first few times you hear it. Well, it was right here in the lyrics to this song. You put the bi- the bigot's head in the back. Yeah, Mr. You know what Jones I mean? was a bigot. Yeah, it's yeah. about a guy going to school whose teacher is telling them that, you know, rebel, he's got to have a rebel flag hanging in his yeah. room and he's teaching, like, you know, and the kid's going crazy because he knows what this guy's teaching him is bullshit, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So he ends up killing his teacher and putting it in his book. And he's also, if you listen to the lyrics, he's also picked on at school and, and all that, you know what I mean? Yeah, so he yeah. ends up snapping, you know. It's, it's fun to get into the, the mind of, of these people that lose it or serial killers and try to write songs from their perspective and yeah. what made them go crazy, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what's neat about what you do, too, it's kind of a bit of a bait and switch to the degree that when I was a kid, Black Sabbath was my band. Like, I I would be up in my room listening to Black Sabbath, and my mother was very religious. And she'd see the album covers laying around black, and she'd hear the, you know, I'm in my room. Terrifying, yeah. And so she called me out one day. She goes, "What? why are you listening to this devil music and all this and that? And she goes, write me down the lyrics of this music. So I actually wrote out the lyrics of... um. I think it was Into the Void. Would you like to see the Pope on the end of the rope? Or do you think he's a fool? You know, that type of thing. And if you if you decipher a lot of Black Sabbath's lyrics, on their surface, they look like this satanic devil band. But a lot of their lyrics are about, like, admonishing the devil mm-hmm. and also, you know, scorning the devil, but also asking questions. Okay, the devil's bad, the devil's bad. But is religion any better yeah, or whatever? Yeah. You know. So, it, but, but you yeah. know what they do is when they're talking about a song like that, they do the same thing to us. Like yeah. they say, they got songs about the devil, right? Yeah. So they got about the devil yeah. against the devil or yeah. whatever. You know. But the, when you write about, it, you can say it's about the devil, and it yeah. makes people automatically think they got songs about the devil, like they're they're worshiping the devil. Yeah. Right. You know. Like they like when they write about us, they say. They have songs about racism and about, you know, and it, but when, with the way they word it, it sounds like that's what we're about. Yeah, right, right. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and it's so easy to, to, to uh, say that type of shit. I know exactly know? what, because that's what happened with my mother when she read the lyrics out that I wrote down. She was totally, like, silenced. Like, she goes, oh, this isn't devil worship. This but when is, it's put to that music, right. it, it, it can have that. Yeah. And with the exactly. name and the personality and all the show busy stuff, but mm-hmm. when you break it down, so that's a really interesting aspect of what you do. So here's this is the most difficult part of the interview. This is going to be tough, okay, for you and your fans. Well, you already asked me where the fucking bodies are. I know, but this is even tougher. Okay, and this is even Shaggy might freak out. So now that I've been in the movie, now that we've talked, now that I might. Help you murder your parents. Hide them. The, hide them. My show, murder them. Um, well, if you're going to laugh. <laughs> but, <laughs> but my question is, and you can say no, am I allowed just for this moment, for this day, 
to become an honorary member of the Insane Clown Posse and go and put makeup on and do the last part of this interview as an honorary member of the Insane Clown Posse in makeup. Well, brother, I'll be honest with you and give you a real answer. A posse is more than two, okay? Now, there's only two people rapping, but we're not a posse. There's only two of us. A posse is the car. This is the insane clown posse, and this what we do is the dark carnival. Are you a part of the carnival? Yes. You, you're on. You're starring in a movie with us. You're very much an iconic figure. And you are part of the insane clown posse. You are part of the carnival, just like the juggalos are. What is ICP without the juggalos, right? They are what makes us cool. They are what validates us. They are part of the posse. They are part of the, the show, the carnival. Wow. This is all the carnival, brother. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> hey, everybody. Check out my merchandise at harbling.com. Yeah, most people just slap some letters or images on a T-shirt or a hoodie. But not me. Yours truly. Guess what? I draw my own designs at hardbling.com. You can see tons of my hand-drawn t-shirts. Uh, you can either buy the original or you can buy a print. And uh, man, oh man, wear them loud and proud. Um, I love making these designs for you guys and uh, keeping it personal. So check out the whole uh, catalog. We got hoodies. We got coffee mugs. We got... Uh, T-shirts, you name it, it's there at harbling.com. Get your uh, Harland original design, wearable art at harbling.com today. And uh, thank you for your support, and I'll just keep the, uh, the groovy images coming. All right, the debut official style as an official juggalo, official as a referee whistle, Harlan Williams, check him out. Boom. Oh, my God. It's what? perfect. What, what? What, 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 what? You know, you need to copyright that design right now because people are going to be ripping you off. They are? Brother, that's actually cool. What, what's my, you got to give me a name, though, now. Like, you, you got Violent J, you got Shaggy 2 Dope. Who the hell am I? Um, 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 Happy Harlan? You know, happy slap happy Harlan. Slap happy Harlan. There and, you go. And I put the lobotomy scar across the top just, you know, because we got Lobotomies stuff. are hilarious. <laughs> They're hilarious. <laughs> Dude, so am I an honorary member for the day of the All juggalo? Day. You're, you're an honorary uh, member every day, though, brother. Oh, bro. Because even when the paint ain't physically on your face, it's on in your heart. You know what I mean? Paint my heart. In our, in, in our hearts as well. We see it on you. God, I'm, I'm so nervous. I'm sweating. Thank God I'm wearing secret underarm deodorant. <laughs> <laughs> that was the whole point of the secret. You got it too. You know? Are you happy with this? I, I am. Can we, give a, can we do an Eskimo-like fist pump? Come on, man. Unka tunk tunka punka tunka 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 tunk tunka. Oh tunk. Yeah, thank you. Her too. Okay, so here now that I'm an honorary member of the juggles, just for a day, I thought what I gotta do to contribute to the band. Oh wait, we gotta do a toast to we gotta cheers some fago. Yeah, we gotta cheers some fago. And then you gotta bounce it off the floor because it's all up from here. Boom. Wow, I'm learning. <laughs> oh, that it sounds like a, it oh, tasted delicious dude that uh, psoriasis sizzler or whatever it's yeah. called so good so here's the last part of, a, of my indoctrination okay as an honorary member of the insane clown pause I thought I wouldn't feel right I wouldn't feel worthy if I didn't write a hip hop song for you guys oh damn we're going all out now you're in a group and anything now. I'm just trying. I'm trying. So here's what I did. I wrote a hip-hop song, and here's what I want to do with it. It's yours if you want it. I own no copyright to it. I'm handing it over to you if you want to do it. But also, I'm handing copyright to your fans. So if you have juggalos that are watching, and they're musicians, and they want to like lay music down to a two, 
There you go. You so just it's, probably it, will hear that. If you, you, you go ahead and do it a cappella style, right. and I guarantee you a version will be born with, right. with, with, with to the music. It's for all of you. So if you guys want to do something you can, or if some of your fans send you a mix and you get to have a listen to it, whatever. Now, since you gave me the rights yeah, yeah, on yours, your show. Yours. Right? Well, yours. you were saying you hope we get that hit. We just might off your lyrics. Well, I don't know. This isn't. I, we'll see. You never know. So now I hate to do this as a juggalo. I got to put readers on. That's why I had the surgery so I could I had yeah. to keep putting them on over my my makeup too. Oh, you know what man. I mean? This is just awkward. Now it's all white and milky <laughs> and God, this is. Hey, a lot of jugglers are getting older though. We all need the readers. You know, what I'm I know. I feel like Deadpool at a library reading. Okay, children, gather around. <laughs> Curious, George was a hairy little monkey. All right, here we go. Now, I got to get in my head because there's a rhythm to it. So, I'd, give me a second to... Okay, ready? Mm -hmm. And you might hate it, you might like it. doesn't matter. It's for you and your fans. Listen, if you fuck up a line, say it again, though, so we can take it and put it to the beat. Yeah, okay, here we go. This is the Insane Cloud Posse jam. From the new member, who am I? Happy, Hap, slap happy Harland. Slap happy Harland. Here we go. Greetings. I just thought you should know the posse is coming to put on a show. It's a madhouse. It's insanity. Going to turn up the temperature to a thousand degrees. Lock your windows. Lock your doors. Tell the pimpos. Tell the whores. Yo, we're coming to your motherfucking town. You can't stop us. ICP clowns, New York City, Baltimore, San Diego. You want more? Hey, Miami. Hey, D.C. Taking over. Clown posse. It's a carnival. And we're the bossy. We'll eat your girlfriends. Candy flossy. We'll take your money. So you're at a lossy. We're the insane clown, clown posse. posse. So tell the mayor we're coming in to fill the city full of sin. And put the popo in riot gear. We'll Fuck their horses right in the rear. Turn up the music until you bleed. We got exactly what, what you, you need. need. It's a carnival we call disaster. We're the muckin' fucking ruckin' ruckin' fucking motherfucking ringmaster. Look out, Dallas and New Orleans. We'll make you women cream the jeans. Hey, Chicago, LA, St. Louis, get on your knees and fucking do us. We're from Detroit and we're expanding. So pretty soon, We'll be landing in your city, in your town. There ain't no hiding from the posse clowns. All right, all right. <sighs> Walking woo steam, woo. Mike. Now, I don't know if it's any good. No, it's pretty I'm, impressive, brother. You don't even rap either? I don't rap, but see, this is that's not the beat. You can do any no, music, any rhythm. And you I were just, surprisingly on beat, though. I was? Yes, I was doing the... the Tempo in my head, and you were even you even knew some of the words. It was wild. Maybe two of them, yeah. But we, any time, you know, posse, not a lot that rhymes with that. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. So I can see that. My coming. favorite line was the the the, uh, the 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 posse, the the uh, cotton flossy or whatever it was. That was candy good. flossy. Nobody saw that. And then the cr part about creaming your, your jeans. Yeah, that was good too. <laughs> so anyway, just it's out there. It's for fun. Do what you will with it. I've done my part. Yeah, I've you heard, heard my way in. Platinum for us. Then he's going to be hitting it. The Lord will be hearing from the attorneys. No, it's your. I'm going to say it again. It's yours. And here's another thing I was going to say. If it ever did something and you wanted to, all the money to the World Wildlife Federation as like a charity thing or some of it. Wait a minute. You just said we could have it all. Now I got not. Which is it? Well, I want the cheetahs and the lions and the gazelles and the wildebeests and the walruses and the ostriches and the lions and the cougars and the jaguars and the anacondas and the sea turtles and the Galapagos tortoises and the great white sharks and all the other ones to have it, not you. Oh, well then I'm not putting it out there. I'm not, I don't care about the porpoises. That's okay. what I said. It goes. It was fun while it lasted. Right. <laughs> so much for that idea. <gasps> Gotta help the fucking chipmunks. <laughs> Come on, if you you look like you've eaten a few chipmunks. Yeah, I have, you know, uh, yeah. a couple of hippos and rhinos. And, yeah. Uh, I, I like to get uh, uh, very eccentric with my tastes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Evil clowns eat what they want. Llama. Uh, before orangutan. We, oh, you got to eat a barbecued orangutan. 
Um, and by the way, w- let's mention real quickly before we go the the uh, the Juggalo the festival. You guys had me out at the the festival one year, uh-huh. and it's the only time in my life I've done stand up comedy at three thirty in the morning. Fuck yeah. I was terrified. <laughs> I thought it was gonna be like just people like zoned out and ha- it was actually really good. I want to say thank you to all the Juggalos because. At 3.30, they were really respectful. Well, we had yeah. a great show. It was outside. I was honestly, it was one of the few times I was scared to do comedy because it was so late. But it, thank you. It it's was great. Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. We appreciate you, brother. Yeah, but tell them real quickly about what that event is. It's the Gathering of the Juggalos. Yeah. It just happened about a month ago this year. Oh, was it good? Yeah, it was really great. And, How many people? Year, uh, about 10,000. Wow. Next year is the, um, is uh, I believe, the 30th anniversary i think wow. maybe next year or the year after i can't remember wow it all blends together maybe no not 30th 25th yeah let's not age it. don't we're not right. into the diaper years 25th. yet yeah, i'm thinking of hollow wicked it's our it's our 30th annual halloween show this year okay yeah well before we go violent j we do one thing with all the guests it's the final thing we do it's called words from a wooden shoe this Dope. is an official dutch clog and God. inside are a bunch of words. You reach in, pull one out, and see if it inspires a memory from your life or a story that happened to you in your life. It's just random and see if you can share it with the, the fun bunch here. Here we go. Here we go. Words from a wooden shoe with Violent J. Stood up by a date. Oh, here we go. Um. Okay. I, I do got a story. Oh, Linda Blair. The Exorcist. Yes. Linda Blair. I was doing a convention. ICP was appearing at, at, I believe it was a horror convention. Whoa. Linda Blair was there. I bet. Right? We were signing autographs, and she was at her table signing autographs, you know? I was trying to holler at Linda Blair. Whoa. You know? So I asked her if she would like to have dinner that night. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And she was like, actually, I'm, I am having dinner. You're welcome to, to come join me. And I was like, awesome. So I'm thinking, she told me the location <laughs> and the place, right? And I'm thinking I'm about to go have dinner with Linda Blair. You and know I already saying? know what was on the menu, pea soup. <laughs> That's right. And I was super excited. Yeah. Who wouldn't be? Yeah. So I got all did it up. Oh, here we go. And I got all you know, shaven and, yeah. sh- and lathered. Yeah, lathered. And I fucking jumped in the car and went down to the venue thinking I'm on my hot date with the exorcist. Oh, you this, know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I I show up at the front and I tell the concierge, Linda Blair party, please. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, they're waiting on me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? She's waiting on me. Yeah. And they take me around the corner and she was at a table with about 42 ninjas. And the only spare chair was way on the opposite end Come of on. her next to Buff and Biff. And I was just like, hell no, nah, I can't uh, even reach her. She's so far away, I had to call her to reach yeah. her. You know what I mean? And I just realized the chance of me scoring with the exorcist were thin, thin and none. So even though she was there, I felt stood up. Dude, then you're not going to like the follow-up to this story. Okay. I got it on with Linda Blair. Oh, my God. Yeah, I call her the sexorcist, by the way. First the fucking igloo. Yeah. Uh, Gang bang. And this is going to chap your ass real hard. And I don't know if you wear makeup on your ass cheeks, but if they, they're going to be frowning after you hear this. Okay. All right. By the way, you don't have clown makeup on your ass cheeks, do you? I, let's just go ahead and... Yeah, let's move on. Let's so, move on. so here's where you're gonna get pissed. I had, I got it on with Linda Blair, the sexorcist, and here's what's great about having sex with her. We went to her house. Oh God, I thought you were gonna say in the igloo. I was about to get no, so heated, bro. No, we we were at her house, and the amazing thing about having sex with Linda Blair is you get so lost in it, it feels like the bed's floating. <laughs> I'll bet, and I'll bet you she's a hell of a dirty talker. Well, I'll tell you what, you know someone gives good head when their head can turn a full revolution. That's right, and they got fangs! Yeah. Yeah. 
Violin J. Tell everybody where they can see, where they can find you on social media, where your next concerts are. You're, you mentioned you have some new songs coming out. Let them know, bud. Everything, all the information you are looking for is at this Instagram address, at violentj.icp. Oh, it's beautiful. And I want to say before we go, because it wouldn't be complete unless we mention them, Shaggy too dope. Shout out to Shaggy, my brother. Shaggy, I wish you were here. And maybe next time we'll have both of you or whatever. But please tell him I said hello. And honk if you love sugar. I already had been bragging that I was coming to holler with you. Oh, good. So he's well aware. He's on tour right now Uh, in some beautiful, peaceful city he was such a great guy we had a lot of fun i didn't have as many scenes one-on-one with you but i had in the movie i i had somewhere i had to be with him a little bit more but great guy you guys were playing the punk ass good guys yeah i know it it was so fun but buddy i want to thank you for being on the harland highway here today and uh what a treat check them out the insane clown posse violent J. And uh, let's hit that juicy theme music once more. Hit it! Oh, here we go. This is this is true hip hop right here. Maybe we could loop this music and put your rap. Oh, really? Over it. <sighs> I'm glad. I'm, I'm grateful not to just be roadkill on the Harlan Highway. Yeah, no, man. Thank you for treating me well. And thank you for having oh, me. Oh, it's been an honor. It's been a pleasure. It's great to see you after. It's been a while since we've seen each other. So. Thank you so much. All the best with the tour and everything. And a great interview here today. Do not juggle unless you end it with whoop, whoop. Whoop, whoop. Oh, I think I just threw my ass out. God, we are getting old. Yeah. Yeah, Until next time, everybody. This is the Harlan Highway Chicken Chow Mein, baby. Wow, I really did throw my ass out. Yeah, it seemed like it. Yeah, I do all the time. I think there's a crack in it. Let me check that. <laughs> that was yeah. a tough too. That was it. No, I knew you'd no, say that. No, well, I think I, I knew it I, came like, across well, as all what, serious. That's what friends do. I know, but I was just kidding. Well, I need you to check my crack. I'm just going to take the pass option. Well, there he goes. Oh, we were friends. <laughs> <laughs>